Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome to another day in the fish room. So a couple of weeks ago I showed you guys the top 10 fish that I don't recommend for the beginner aquarist and you guys asked me to show you guys the opposite video. So today we're going to take a look at my top 10 fish that I do recommend for someone newly entering into this aquarium hobby. The following fish in this list are not just easy to care for, but on top of that these fish can provide instant gratification. I know that as a beginner, a lot of times we set up our aquarium, we're going to add fish that immediately look awesome, immediately are very entertaining, and for the most part all these fish in this list fit that category. On top of that, all the fish in this list are inexpensive. Now of course this video is based upon my opinion, which is fueled by my previous experiences in this aquarium hobby. All the fish in this list are fish that I've owned previously or fish that I currently keep today. And of course, opinions will vary. We all had different experiences. As another viewer pointed out in a different video, we all come from all around the world, us fish keepers, and we all have different water qualities coming out of our tap. Over here in New Jersey, I'm in the city, so I get a higher pH coming out of my tap water. Some of you guys across the country could get lower pH, and we all get different water parameters, and this is definitely going to have an effect on fish that we find hardy to our aquariums. And lastly, I believe that one of the major struggles for a new aquarist is mixing aquarium fish. It's not really hard finding fish that are hardy because there's a lot of hardy fish in this hobby, but it can be difficult mixing fish, creating a community. So with these fish in this list, I will point out some fish that they can be mixed with. So with that being said, the first fish that I recommend for the beginner aquarist is the electric blue acara. Now this may come as a surprise, but I find these fish to be extremely easy to care for and extremely rewarding. So first off, when you look at this fish, it's extremely beautiful, one of the brightest fish in my aquarium. And these fish are genetically morphed, so from an early age they show this bright coloration, and both males and females show this coloration. So as a beginner, there's no loss. You get a male, you get a female, and you still get this coloration. You don't have to wait for the fish to mature to show these colorations. It shows it from a young age, so you definitely get instant gratification. And on top of that, these fish are very hardy, surprisingly. This fish is, once again, genetically morphed, and I find that a lot of genetically morphed fish do have some disadvantages, especially with health, but this is not the case with this fish. These fish are just, surprisingly, as I said, very hardy. Mine has been in the aquarium now for a couple of years. He survived ick, he survived power outages, and just a couple of different things that will usually knock out most aquarium fish. And just, this fish is a great option for beginners. So as I said, these fish give you instant gratification. They're hardy. For the most part, they're not aggressive. Now, when you keep one of these fish, it's best if you only keep one. That's when difficulties start to come if you try to get multiple. Just get one of these electric blue car for one of your community aquariums. You want to make sure that you keep them with fish not small enough to be eaten. I keep mine with barbs, and they definitely do well. But as a beginner, I recommend some tetra, larger tetra, and you definitely will enjoy this fish. The next fish that I recommend for the beginner aquarist is the convict cichlid. Now I know some of you guys will argue with me about this because convict cichlids are known for their aggression, but despite their aggression I do believe that they are a great choice for people newly entering into this hobby, especially if they're interested in keeping new world cichlids. Chances are if you're subscribed to my channel you do have some interest for new world cichlids because I do keep a lot of them. And my first new world cichlid was the convict cichlid. These fish taught me a lot, they are extremely hardy. When I first started keeping comedy cichlids, I kept mine in an African cichlid tank with a higher pH than recommended um, and it survived. I definitely don't recommend that, but they are very hardy. And on top of that, they do teach you the fundamentals about American cichlids. The first thing I love about convicts is that they're extremely easy to sex. The females, they have orange stomachs, while the males are completely black and gray with the bars. And usually at your local fish here, they do sell them at two to three inches, which is the size that they are able to be sexed. As a beginner, I recommend that you just buy a male and a female. These fish can live in as small as a tank as 20 gallons, but of course bigger is always better and it'll just be great to watch them interact with each other. It'll be cool to watch them build a nest to raise up fry because these fish are very easy to breed and on top of that they are very protective of their young and it's definitely a great experience and it will teach you the basics of Central and South American cichlids. If you want to add other fish to the aquarium, because these fish are defending their young they will be more aggressive so I recommend only fish that are very fast, fish like Buenos Aires Tetra or Giant Danio.
next fish that I recommend for the beginner aquarist are platys. I love platys because these fish are very beautiful. I love their colorations. They come in a nice assortment of colors and they definitely do a good job showing off those colors. These fish love to swim. They love to explore the tank. They love to look for food. And with that behavior, you get a lot of movement. The colors are mixing around and it's just a great display. On top of that, you're almost guaranteed to get some breathing action because these fish breathe very easily. All you have to do is provide some cover for the babies because they do give birth to live babies and the parents unfortunately will eat their babies if they get the chance. So just provide some plants, some rocks, some driftwood, um, different things that the babies can hide behind. And overall, platy is just a nice fish to keep. Definitely a great experience for people newly entering into the hobby. next fish that I recommend for beginners is the white cloud minnow. Now I love the white cloud minnow because these fish are very beautiful and at the same time very easy to take care of. When you take a close look at these fish they just have so many fine details, so many colors here and there and just overall a very beautiful fish. Now these are a school group of fish so for the best results you need to keep them in larger numbers. These are also a subtropical group of fish so they do best in temperatures between 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And lastly, these fish are pretty small, only get reaching about one inch. So you need to keep them away from fish that would eat them. But besides that, that's all you need to know about these fish. Easy to take care of and awesome. The next fish that I would recommend for a beginner in a hobby are giant danio. Now danio all together are a hardy group of fish. But I especially love giant danio because of their size. They can reach about four inches and they are extremely active. I know that when you first get into the hobby, you want a tank that's active. You don't want fish that's gonna hide. And a giant danio definitely fits that category. These fish always swim back and forth and they almost never stop moving. Now, giant danio, just like the white cloud minnow, they are a subtropical group of fish. So they will prefer cooler temperatures between 65 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. These fish need to be kept in numbers. That's how you get the most activity. That's how you get the best behavior and just the overall best experience with these fish. They do like to stay at the higher portion of the tank. This is good because it allows just a greater chance with mixing other fish. They stay at the top so they really don't have to bother or be bothered by other fish in the tank. The only concern is that being a top water swimmer, they do have a tendency to jump, so you do want a lid. But besides that, these fish are very hardy and very great for beginners. The black skirt tetra is the next fish that I would recommend for beginners. If there was one word I had to choose to describe this fish, it would be bulletproof. This is probably the most hardiest fish that I know of. I kept one years ago and it was when I was first entering into the hobby. And you know me, I made a lot of mistakes so this fish went through a lot. Nevertheless, he survived it all and he looked his best throughout the entire phase of me learning the aquarium fundamentals. But yeah, these fish are extremely hardy. I really don't hear any complaints about them when it comes to behavior and just overall a great fish to keep. Now these fish may lack in color, but they do make up with texture and just body design. You look at them and they have a nice skirt on their body, they have some nice stripes, and then they also have some cool looking teeth. So overall these fish are a great addition to your aquarium. They are, they can reach about 3 inches, they are schooling fish so you do want to keep them in groups. Um, but their bigger size makes them able to be kept with larger tank mates, like the electric blue Akara that I listed first, or even the convict cichlid. But yeah, black skirt tetra are definitely a cool fish, very hardy, the hardiest fish that I know of, and um, just definitely cool to have in your tank. by that we have another tetra that I recommend and it is the Buenos Aires tetra. I love these tetra because they look like miniature dorado fish. They are a schooling group of tetra. They can reach about two to three inches and these fish are extremely active. Just like the giant daniel these fish almost never stop moving so I love their energy level and just like the black skirt tetra these fish are very hardy. Now these fish definitely need to be kept in groups because I've kept single ones before and when they are kept solo they can become very aggressive so it's important that you keep them in groups but just like the black skirt tetra being that they get a little bit larger they make great fish or tank mates for smaller central and south american cichlids 
next fish that I recommend for beginners is the Molly. Now there are several different assortments of Mollies, but my favorite is the Selfin Molly. I love Mollies because they are just as easy to care for as platies. They just provide a little bit more size. So a male Selfin Molly can reach about five inches, which I think is very beautiful. For these Selfin Mollies, you will need a minimum of 40 gallons. And it's best if you keep a group of them. I find that if you only keep a few Mollies, then you get problems with them chasing and attacking other fish in a tank whereas if you keep a decent number let's say five or more they tend to stay more among themselves and um they just interact with each other more and not so much with the other fish in a tank but i love selfie mollies because these fish are extremely beautiful and for the most part they are very easy to take care of now you have your selfie mollies you have your common mollies you have leertail mollies and you even have balloon mollies all of which require the same amount of care but as i said the selfie mollies in my opinion are the best of the group and they definitely are easy to care for. The next fish that I would recommend for the beginner aquarist is the blue or the yellow gourami. Now these fish are extremely hardy, they can handle a lot, they get a nice size at about 4 inches. Now the only thing is I recommend that you only get one garami per tank as a beginner. I hear a lot of people coming to me telling me that their garami are always fighting each other and that's because garami are very territorial especially towards their own kind. So in smaller aquariums you're almost bound to get a fight if you keep multiple. It can't be done, you just need to provide plants, decorations to, to just separate their eyesight, their view of each other. But they can be difficult for a beginner, so I recommend one garami per tank and you definitely will be able to enjoy the garami more with less aggression and just more of a peaceful environment. Okay everyone, and the final fish that we'll recommend for beginners in this aquarium hobby are tiger barbs. Now tiger barbs are one of my favorite fish, but I know that there's a lot of controversy around them because they are known to be fin nippers and they do a lot of times have bad behaviors, but those behaviors can be easily corrected. So first off, I love tiger barbs because they are very beautiful. I love their tiger pattern. On top of that, they are very hardy. They can survive a lot of mistakes that beginners may make. And they are very active fish. They love moving, they have a lot of energy. Now the energy, I do believe, is the main reason why they are faulted for being fin nippers and for being aggressive. Tiger barbs, they have a lot of energy and they need to release that energy. So if you don't have a large enough group of tiger barbs, they're gonna release that energy on other fish in a tank and that's why you get aggression. When you keep tiger barbs, you need to keep a large number. And if anybody ever kept tiger barbs in a large number, you'll notice that they're always going about chasing each other, that they're always like sparring with each other and they just have a lot of energy. And the best way to release it is with other tiger barbs. They will stay among themselves and they will keep each other entertained. But if you don't provide a large enough school, they will change their focus from each other and go to the other fish in the tank and that's where your problems come from. Another problem with tiger barbs is that people don't really put them with the correct fish. Once again, these fish have a lot of energy, so it's best if you don't put them with fish that have low energy levels. Fish that include bettas or angelfish. So with tiger barbs, it's just a matter of making sure you keep a large enough school and keeping them in an energetic environment because these fish have a ton of energy. So when you do provide that, these fish are very hardy and as I said, very beautiful and just very awesome fish to watch. Okay everyone, so that has been a list of the top 10 fish that I believe are best suited for the beginner Aquarius. So as always, if you have any questions about what you saw today, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Now there's a lot of us watching this video that have kept a number of different fish. So if you know any fish that is good for beginners, let us all know in the comment section below. So yeah, once again, thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Like it, thumbs up, want more, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.